We should be filled with joy, the Lord says, because of the fact that he has made us overcomers. And in the days ahead, the joy of the Lord needs to be your strength. And the reason that Paul was able to be imprisoned and was able to write down as much as the Lord gave him to write down was because he was filled with the joy of the Lord. And it was why he could still hear from the Lord. And it was why he was able to be an overcomer no matter what was happening to him. And so he wants us to remember the joy that we're feeling today. And we need to draw on that joy that indwells within us because it's going to be the very rock that's going to sustain us no matter what is going to be happening to us in the next days. So rejoice and be glad for the Lord never changes. His word will always stand and he is no respecter of persons. And he says, therefore, rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Let's do that. Let's just rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice, rejoice, joy, joy, Jesus, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah. Do it, an act of faith. Give them your best. Jesus, you are our joy. Jesus, you are our victory. Jesus, you are our everything. Ha, 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 hallelujah in you. In you we overcome. In you we have joy. In you, in you, in you, in you, Christ in us. Oh, the hope, the hope, the hope, the hope of glory. Oh, rejoice, 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 rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, you'll find in the days ahead that joy will be your strength and will carry you through, that you can count it all joy when you face various things because he is our joy and he has overcome. It was for the joy set before Jesus that he endured the cross for us. And if you're... Allowing the devil, I say allowing the devil, because a thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. You got to resist the enemy, and he'll flee. But in the, whatever circumstance you're in, in the terrible, the worst circumstances, I want you to know right now, God can give you joy in the middle of it. But it's a choice. Choose him. Choose his joy. Choose to yield. Choose to submit. Choose to resist the enemy who comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So we just command all joy robbers, all joy stealers, all things that try to joy destroyers to be gone in the name of Jesus. Be gone in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for the victory. Victory. Praise them for the victory in advance. Hallelujah. 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 You can be seated in his presence. This battle is the Lord's. This battle is the Lord's. And when God fights the battle for you in advance, you can thank him. Can you hear that? You can thank him for the victory. What a wonderful, intimate time of worship. I think I, my, my mascara probably ran down my face. I don't know what's, what it looks like right now, but it doesn't matter. When we touch God's heart and he touches ours, nothing matters. It's not about us. It's about him. And he is at work in you. Okay, you need to know that God is at work in you to work and to will and to do for his good pleasure. And he's going to finish that work as long as you let him. That's the key. Let him have his way. Woo! And so today, we're going to have a powerful message from Pastor Wayne again. We've been talking about faith and how faith overcomes. Faith is pleases God. You've got to have the righteous are going to live by faith. You've got to be moved and operating this hour by faith. Faith is trust. 
And you gotta trust God in this hour. And you gotta believe him and believe his promises. So extend your hand to Pastor Wayne. He's got a powerful message today. Father, we just say our hearts are good, fertile ground. We receive the seed of your word. It gets implanted in our hearts and it takes root and it produces a hundredfold. The enemy will not kill, steal, or destroy the word that's now being implanted in our hearts. Your word will endure forever. And Lord, you're faithful to your word. Your word will take root. It will produce. And Lord, we thank you that we are hearers that hear your word. And we see what you want us to see. And thank you from the revelation that now comes from the heavenly realm. And we thank you, Lord, for oracles of God, faith words that stir us from one level of glory to the next, that he, this is how we overcome in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hun, why don't you take your, your geekers. Oh, yeah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, man. You know, it's so good to have a, uh, a good worship team. Amen. And I, I, don't, I don't refer to them as, as a band. Amen. Um, they, they worship. You know, Judah, Judah always goes first. Amen. Which is praise. And, and God had said to Brother Benny Hinn in the deepest trial of his life, and he was just saying, you know, God, what do I do? He said, Benny Praise is the language of faith. And he just started praising away his problems. Man, just praise away your problems. Devil comes up to you. You just start praising away your problems. Devil says, what, are you singing? Are you praising? Say, come here, come here, buddy. Whoops. Amen. Glory to God. We're more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. I love the fact that we've got unity on the board. We've got unity on the stage. We've got unity, unity, unity. And where there is unity, it says the Lord commands a blessing. Woo! I was going to share something a little bit humorous. Willie, you're going to really like this. There was a... Uh, and I've never even had a quarrel with uh, him ever. I mean, he's Willie is just Willie's just a really nice guy. Amen. You're gonna you're gonna make a woman happy one day. Amen. He's single, by the way. Internet. Okay. Amen. Oh wow. Yeah. Lord, forgive me. Amen. Mama Bear is out there like yeah. Anyway, there was a worship leader, and the pastor got in a little like scuffle, and the um, pastor you know, was talking about his sermon was going to be on, you know, dedicating yourself to the Lord. And, you know, basically he said, well, just before the pastor sings, we're going to all sing one song, and it's, I shall not be moved. The pastor didn't like that. He said, oh, that's just a, you know, it's a coincidence. So the next week, uh, the sermon was on given. And uh, the worship leader goes, we're just going to sing one song before his message, and that's Jesus paid it all. Pastor saying, boy, that's, that, that can't be a coincidence. And then the third Sunday, he said, well, I'm going to be talking today about the, the sin of gossiping. And the, the you know, the <laughs> director comes up and says, well, we just need to sing one song, you know, before we start his message. And it's, um, <laughs> I like to tell a story. <laughs> and then the last week, the, the senior pastor just said, you know, I, I've had enough of this abuse. And he got up. And um, he was sharing that, you know, he was going to just resign. And um, then the worship leader did a special song immediately after his sermon, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. You know, the Word of God says that um, he that sits upon the throne frowns. No, 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 no. He that sits upon the the throne laughs, and, and please write this down if you're taking notes. Um, faith is an attitude that creates an atmosphere. Places have atmospheres. Bars have an atmosphere. Churches, if they're alive, have the right atmosphere. But being in the right atmosphere will bring you into his holy stratosphere. Because when you have an attitude of praise, God will raise. Because attitude in the spirit, if you want to write this down, is altitude. 
Come on now. I want to go up higher. I want to go up higher. And I, you know, I jokingly say when I get on the floor or when I bend my knee, you know, God loves to answer an email. Okay, we're going to be um, on faith and faith series, and we're going we're to do a quick review. But I just, I can't tell you how much of a part love and faith work together. A lot of people haven't even, you know, connected the dots. And, um, you know, I was just thinking of coming off the field as a business owner and an evangelist when I first got up here, when Pastor Jerry passed us the torch. And how many original originals do we have? Come on, raise your hands. All right, not that many. Man, I was, I was the evangelist, and I, I was in war with some people that kind of just wanted a one-hour service. Amen. We, Pastor Jerry used to say three points in a poem and send them home. Amen. And I kept people. Amen. I kept them till oh, Lord, we, 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 we were almost going to lock the doors. Amen. Until they changed their hearts. But, um, you know, <laughs> what happened was God ended up changing my heart. And a few of the originals said, man, Ooh, Pastor Wayne, you're so much more patient, you're, you're so much more loving, and you've really seasoned as a pastor. Amen. How many could put an amen to that? Amen. My wife's over there like, amen. <laughs> we said a few weeks ago, uh, just for a super quick review, that when faith comes, darkness goes. Faith is not a concept. It's not in the mental arena. Faith is a spiritual force, if you're taking notes, that releases the presence and power of Yeshua. I want to go where there's power. Amen. When I was a little kid, I liked power. I liked Superman. I liked Man, you couldn't give me juice even in Sunday school if it wasn't a lion punch. I wanted power. I want some mwamby pamby watered down gospel. Oh, sister granny's offended because somebody stole her seat. You know, amen. Fighting over a mildew pew on a cushion. Glory to God. We're the redeemed and we stand in a holy priesthood. Woo! <laughs> we really don't, you could take this back to Two Trees in the Garden. How many remembered that series? Many said that was our favorite series to date. But, you know, you really don't have a sin problem so much because technically we really don't have a sin nature. Now, I'm not saying we don't sin. That would be a lie. You know, James says if we, we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But we do have a new nature. We are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. So we really don't have so much a sin problem. Do you know what we really have? We have a faith problem. God simply said to Adam and Eve, the mother of all creation, you know, in the day you mess with that tree, you're going to die. Did God really say? Hmm. If you have to stop and think... You're in the lion's jaws. Do you understand that? If they just stuck, uh, stood with the original word that was given them, oh my, we, we wouldn't have sin, I don't think, in the world. So we really don't have so much of a sin problem as we have a faith problem. Because if we're led by the Spirit, it says in the New Testament, we're not under the law. Hello? And faith which works by love. And love covers a multitude of sin. Ooh, thank you. Mark 11, I'm just, I'm teasing. Mark 11.23 and Mark 11.24 talk about, you know, whatsoever or whosoever you say. And we mentioned that it says, saith three times, but believeth once. And when uh, Brother Hagin had a divine inner counter in heaven, he said, I want my people on earth to speak three times more than they're believing. They're not, he said in heaven, my people are not missing it in how they're believing. My people are missing it on the speaking end. And he said, do you notice that I said, 
it, it, it's, it's, it's Mark 11, 23 and 24. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain or problem, be thou removed, be cast in the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, spirit, but believe those things he saith, he shall have whatsoever he saith. And we gave the demonstration of, you know, lady during the tent revivals in the 50s and the 60s went to all the big dogs, all the who's who and the charismatic zoo, couldn't get healed. Finally, cor cornered all Robert, said, I have all the faith in the world, but I can't be healed. And he turned to her and he said, you're right, woman, you have all the faith in the world and that's your problem. You're not releasing it. Took a few minutes with her and said, let's confess, let's agree together. Instantly healed. It's one thing to have faith, but faith, please write this down, demands expression. It has a lot to do with being linked to love, and it has a lot to do with being under authority. A lot. We're going to talk about the authority a little bit. We're going to talk about the love a little bit. Ooh. In Romans 10.8, we said, it says, the word is near and nigh to me. It's in my mouth. And in my spirit and my heart, this is the word of faith which we preach. That wasn't a movement. <laughs> that was the word. And then if you want to go to Genesis 1, uh, 3, it's where Jesus, and, and, you know, he's like watching, let's put it that way. God actually decrees. See, Jesus, God, Holy Spirit, they've always been around. Do we realize that? All right, Jesus wasn't like just a new concept or idea when we come in the New Testament. Okay. He speaks let there be light, and light was. Out of the abundance of the Father's heart, he spoke, and it happened. Out of the abundance of our heart, we speak, and it happens. If it's up in the mental realm, and you're just speaking the word of God, the letter of the law that kills, it's, you're no different than a parrot. For whosoever shall say under this mountain, be thou removed. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen. But when you speak out of the reservoir, out of the glory, when you speak even from a pulpit, from behind the veil, when you join your words to his words, see, this is what God spoke to an evangelist that was broke, unhealed, and a loser on steroids. I'll tell you his name in a minute. When he had no meetings and he couldn't get anyone saved. I mean, he was like, like he was so bad, he'd be like, hey, I'll give you this, this, this offering basket with some money in it. If you'll, if you'll come and just give your heart to the Lord. You know, just trying so hard. Couldn't get anywhere. He fasted and he prayed, and the Lord said, you don't have faith is your problem. Faith is a universal key. Please write that down. Without faith, we can't please God. We can't do anything with faith. And then he said to this young man, you need to speak my logos, my word. Put it in your mouth. Put it in your heart. Speak it. He's like, yeah, yeah, I've heard that. You know, some say name it and claim it. Name it and frame it. Blob it and grab it. And they make fun of it. And they make fun of prosperity, too. Those are the ignoramuses going around peddling a broken moped, and they have no faith. They're, they're busted. They're disgusted. This is what God said to this young evangelist. He said, if you'll put your words, excuse me, he said, if you'll put my words in your mouth, it will change everything. And then he spoke to him, and he said this. He said, son, my words in your mouth are just as powerful as my words in my mouth. Ding! No, it's not dinner. <laughs> Some were like, do you know who that man was? Reinhard Bonnke. That word spoken to a man that was going nowhere. One rhema can change your life. One word from God can open up the heavens. There was another man that had a home church. In another country, he couldn't get more than 20 people in his house. He cried. He prayed. He did everything. Home church. And he said, you know, Lord, I guess I'm just a loser because I just can't seem, you know, he wanted to take it from a home church into a building. He said, I can't 
get anyone to come. And guess what happened? The Lord spoke to him and said, son, you go into deep prayer and I'll show you your problem. One word from God can shift a nation. And during this time of, of deep praying in the spirit, seeking after the Lord with all of his heart, this <laughs> How many know what that is? It's not a mother-in-law, it's a cobra, okay? And if this cobra, and you just know my heart, I'm teasing. This cobra comes out at him and he knows in here in the vision to grab it right there by the throat. And he grabbed this thing and he said, in the name Jesus, I take authority over this, this cobra, this serpent spirit that has hindered the growth of my ministry. And he shook it, saying the name of Jesus, and kerplunk, it went down. That night, 6 p.m. service, if you have 20, 25 on Sunday morning, what do you have on a Sunday night? You don't have to be a mathematician, about 3% of 20 probably. All these people started coming through the door. And he goes, how'd you hear? He said, the most handsome young man, just beaming from ear to ear, stopped me in the street and said, that's the place you want to go, home church over there. So another prominent family comes in, very prominent, and said, how'd you hear about us? This beautiful woman standing out in the street corner with just such a glow on her face said, you want to go to that home church? They quadrupled in size the first night after dealing with the snake. Deal with the snake. Have some rattlesnake stew if you need it. Don't let the devil rattle you. Cut that rattler off and make some stew. He became, in the 80s and 90s, a man with the world's largest church because he heard a word from Papa's lips. I live from every word that he speaks. His name is David Cho. That's the beginning of greatness when God speaks a word. The Bible says a word in due season. How good it is! Some of you just need to seek the Lord. Those that seek the Lord will lack no good thing. Woo. Smith Wigglesworth said the only person in the Bible that it's recorded that he was deceived by feelings was Esau. Do you remember that? The whole thing with the, the skin on the arm and the voice? Go with your first impression. Go with the first scripture Holy Spirit brings to you. Please write this down. Holy Ghost always brings good word as you're meditating. Hmm, should I obey God or not? <laughs> he comes in. Did God really say? Your first inner feeling, your intuition of the Holy Spirit is always God. Please write that down. Your, did God really say, I'll do it later. I'll procrastinate. Procrastination is terrible. The Lord told me regarding procrastination, I shared with this. He said, Wayne, don't procrastinate because it slows down my blessings on your life. Because the things you're doing, you're doing delayed. So the blessing is delayed. See, I get up first even before my wife now. I want my prayers to hit the throne room before her. And it works, right? Amen. Feelings literally follow confession. Feelings follow what you say. And actually, they've proven, secular surgeons have proven that the right words spoken release the right chemicals. The wrong words spoken mechanically and on a molecular level release the wrong chemicals. Please write this down. You're the total of what you've said the week before. If you believe we have armor and the power of life and death is in the tongue, then we should watch what we say because we said words are either passcodes that take us in or roadblocks that stop us. 
And that's why Kevin said about words, because they're containers, if you want to write that down, words contain either life or death. And what Jesus said when he appeared to him, he said, Kevin, be very careful about what you say about other people in the church, your brother and your sister, because even your words, because I've created you in my image to create, even your words can hinder my process of maturity and dealing with my own people. I felt, I felt like some seeds hit me in the face. Folks, he's given the church now the authority to legislate. Hello? He's given, didn't he say, I've received all power and authority, and then he said, now I'm giving it to you, and I'm delegating it to you, now you go and raise it at heal the sick, right? So, so if we don't do certain things in faith, who's going to do them? He's going to wait for someone else to come along to be obedient, because Jesus just doesn't, ah! Hey, I'm here. No one else doing the job. I'll do it. Doesn't work that way. How many have heard of Rodney Howard Brown? Rodney Howard Brown was fasting in prayer for this, I think it was like a 17, 18 passenger van. And, you know, the Lord said, it's done. You know, you're going to get it. And like a long, long time went by. <laughs> Through faith and patience. We receive the promises. One pastor said, Lord, I want patience, and I want it right now. (laughs) Doesn't work that way. So the Lord, because the Lord said, Rodney, the the van is done, it was like two years later, a businessman came up, and he gave him the van. And he's like, you know, he's like, Lord, you know, you know how he talks, like, Lord, like two years? He see, he doesn't understand how it works in the spirit realm. Two years, Really? Oh, come on, folks. The angels aren't up there like old with arthritis. Oh, we got to get them the van. Oh, it's going to take a while. No, no. Why are there delays? The delay is connected to earth. And this is what God told them when he started belly aching. I I would highly recommend you start belly aching and unburden yourself to the Lord. That's when he'll give you a haircut and straighten you out. My best belly aching times have turned into a rebuke like Job. Hey, dude, where were you when I put the stripes on the zebra? Or the mask on the raccoon. Where were you? Didn't he belittle Job for like two chapters almost? Yes. Where were you? Where were you? Where were you? You know, when I carved the canyons with my finger. You know, if you're Job, you're like, oh, he just keeps going. I mean, he got on the wrong side of God. He's like, Job's like, will you stop, please? This has been like two chapters. I get the message. I, I trust you. I trust you. So God says to Rodney Howard Brown, after he's bellyache in like two years, really, guess what the Lord said to him? He said, the moment you fasted and prayed for that van in faith, I released into my servant to buy it. But he was disobedient. He heard, but didn't want to do it. He said, so I went to my next one, and I sent my angels to seed their heart and my spirit to knock on their door, and they decided to do it, but they delayed. So I had to go to a third person. I don't know the exact number, but I think it was either 12 or 15. They're like the 15th person. They finally said, okay, we'll do it right away. God is sovereign and he's in control, but he's put man in charge. And we have faith to either please him or a lack of it to displease him. So just don't be throwing out, hallelujah, well, God's in charge. Hey, man, if you don't pay your tithes here, we shut down. Hello? Hello? Well, I'm just going to live by faith and not work. Yeah, we'll see how that works. Somebody said that to Norville Hayes at one of his conferences. Well, I'm just going to live by faith, and I'm just going to live on bird seed and rice, and God will supply my needs. And, and, and Norval said, come over here, buddy. He was a millionaire many times over. He said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast that, that poverty vagabond spirit out of you. And then you're going to go out of this conference and get a job and be responsible. Paul said, if you don't work, you don't eat. So there's the natural side and there's the spiritual side. Wigglesworth said, 
No one tells Wigglesworth how he feels. I tell Wigglesworth how he feels. I'm just saying. I'm not even from Louisiana. I'm just saying. Don't take the bait. How are you doing? Don't stop and give him a bad report. If I'm feeling terrible and I'm in an elevator, somebody say, hey, Pastor Wayne, how you doing? And I, it ain't happening. You know what I say? I'm experiencing some challenges, but I'm believing God for his highest and his best. I'm not going to sign and deliver like a stoonod. Oh, well, the doctor said that I have asthma, and the doctor said that I have lockjaw, and the doctor said I have this, and I, 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 I'm broke, and I've got cirrhosis of the giver, and the doctor said this, and the... The doctor? Ooh. And we said Psalms 34, 19 says, many are the afflictions of the righteous... And, and people stop there. How is your day? Oh, I'm terrible. I'm going through famine, flood, pestilence, all in the same day. Oh, jeez, wow. Well, can I be honest with you? I'll come back to Psalms 34, 19, but when I'm really down, I mean, I'm just down. I get down some days, but I know how to get myself right back up. I like speed dial the biggest crybaby in this church. I'm not gonna tell you who it is, because we won't have a big crybaby in the church anymore. And I'll ask them simply how they're doing. Oh, they'll give me an organ side. Oh, my kidneys, my liver, you know, bad confession after bad confession. And I listen for a while about their pain, their arthritis, their, their kids don't serve the Lord, their dog ran away. I mean, everything is just wrong. And I'm like, dang, I don't think I have a problem. I feel good now. Okay, click. <laughs> it's perspective. But Psalms 34, 19 says, many are the afflictions of the righteous but they don't finish it. And the Lord delivers out of them all. And in the original Hebrew there, we said that means tests, trials, or sickness. It doesn't always just mean sickness. It can mean weakness, depending on how you're using it. So just remember, whatever you're going through, like that book by David Nunn, Declaration Faith. He said, on your worst day, you can say, I am blessed. Paul said, it's just but for a moment our affliction. Right? Just but for a moment. Please write this down. We're going to go into new stuff in just a moment. But circumstances will always manifest against the word. And it really comes down to whose report will you believe? I don't let people talk junk to me. When I had my spinal cord injury and they were like, you're never going to walk again. We're going to probably put one of those bags on you because I had lost bowel and bladder. My whole left leg, I couldn't move. My whole saddle region, I couldn't feel. Um, there was a lot of multiple, multiple problems. I was respectful but I talked back to the surgeon. I talked back to the nurse. I said, well, you know what? I'm believing better. My faith tells me that I can have what I say, and you'll see that I'll have what I'll say. And I said, by the way, out of this 12th floor spinal cord trauma unit, I'll be the fastest one to get up out of this bed and leave. And they would be huddled laughing about me. I could, I could hear really good sometimes. It's like, have you given him too much delorant? I was on delorant. I was hooked up to IV, you know, heavy morphine, a lot of stuff. But they noticed, because faith is an atmosphere. They noticed that my room at the hospital was the cool place to be. And I had a few nurses. I had a nurse just come in the door, just. She goes, I just want to stand here. Okay. She goes, the guy a few doors down is paralyzed. You just threw a bedpan at me. He's so angry. He's never going to walk again. She goes, but when I come in here, I feel good. There's something in this room. I don't know what it is. We all think you're just a little out there, but we... 
we really like the, the vibe. There's a vibe in this room. There's a good vibe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, because I was in Toronto for over a week, and I've been down to Rodney, they call him Odney, you know, Howard Brown, he calls himself that, the spirit of laughter just came on me. I was in pain, so I started laughing. And I started laughing in the natural, but then I got into the spiritual laugh. And if I laugh, you hear it. So I'm laying down. Oh. <laughs> I have a whole bunch of nurses running. Are you okay? I'm, no, I'm, I'm really good. I'm really good. I'm, and I laughed, and I laughed, and I laughed, and I laughed. And, and I had a, a catheter, and there was a bag at the end of my bed. And when I would laugh, I would, I would, it would, the level would go up. <laughs> and the nurse would say, stop laughing. You're just, you're just pumping out all the, the toxins in your urine. And, 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 and I was drinking water, because I used to work in a health food store, you know, the detox, drinking water, pitcher after pitcher after pitcher. And I'd laugh. <laughs> they were changing bag after bag <laughs> after bag. But you know what? I got out of there the fastest in the history of that hospital. And the nurse said, it's our policy to wheelchair you out. And I did a Jesse on her. I said, no, baby, you sit in the wheelchair and I'm going to wheel you out. She goes, you are unusual. I said, I know. I've been told that since I was born. Asher means what? Asher means laughter. Asher means laughter. And Gail Sheehan, how many remember Gail comes out here from Christian International under Bishop Hammond, Bill Hammond, a real prophet, a general. He stops the meeting. Gail and, and Leon prophesies over me, all about reads my mail, you know, past, present, part of the future. But he said, over you, sir, is the spirit of Asher. Because you're going to get the best inheritance of the land. You're going to have laughter and favor continually on your life. And he said, where you have been brutalized, rejected, hurt, because you wouldn't settle for religion, where people have abandoned you, your troops have left you almost alone at one time, God's going to bring back ten times that for all the pain and the suffering, for not compromising for not compromising. And he said, there's an oil of laughter and favor on you that's very strong. Well, what he didn't know was when I was born, Dr. Zalichin examined me and he couldn't touch me. Every time he'd touch me, I'd go into hysterical laughing. <laughs> and he said, I've never seen a baby with such joy. He said that. I couldn't be examined. And then I was like a little Jehu. You know those little things that you put, those little, you're like three years old, and they're those little things you go like that. I was going like across the carpet, like 60 miles an hour. I mean, everywhere I went, I went fast, fast and laughing. My mom's like, he's gonna be a race car driver, <laughs> laughing, just burning rubber in the carpets, amen? But that's part of my gift, and that's part of my dynamic. Ooh. So listen to circumstances. Simply disagree with them. You could write this down. Circumcise your circumstances. Take the sword of the word. Side in with God's word. Please go to Isaiah 10, 27, where it talks about the anointing and the anointing oil that says it destroys the yoke. If you want to write this down, words that are anointed release you out of the assignments against you. It says in Isaiah 10, 27, that the oil and the anointing will break the yoke off your neck and your shoulder. And what you need to learn to do is break those assignments of the devil right off of you. Break them. Get bigger. The Lord told me one day when I was going through it, people are lying on me, exaggerating, embellishing. When they like you, you notice they don't do that. 
when you get out of favor with someone, you can't do anything right. Do you realize that? You know what the Lord said to me? He said, outlive the lie. That's what he told me. He said, outlive the lie. I'm like, how do I do that? You shut your mouth and you breathe oxygen. And you just wait for favor to come. Because you don't defend yourself. Did Jesus defend himself on the cross? He blessed back so he could bounce back. And that's what Brother Kevin said. In the spiritual realm, you literally unhook yourself from a demonic word curse when you bless back. When people hurt me really bad, I get the checkbook out. They're going to get 500 bucks, baby. And they're like, whoo, this is a good deal. But what they don't realize is when I take it out of my hands and then I put it in God's hands, vengeance becomes his. Most things cannot be settled because they're in our hands of offense, our hands of judgment, our hands of opinion. When you take things out of your court and you go to the courts of heaven and you sit down because you're supposed to be seated in the heavenly places anyway and you say, Lord, I bless them. He said, bless those that despitefully use you. Lord, I bless them. I, I pray the best into their life. I pray the highest return on their crops. And when you do that, please write this down. The Bible says that when Job <laughs> prayed for his enemies, the Lord doubled everything that was taken from him. It's right in the word. How would you like double for your trouble? Amen. When Job prayed for his enemies and he blessed a nasty situation. Remember those three friends? In the original Hebrew, it's literally pronounced mu, lara, and kule. Oh, God. <laughs> you don't need enemies if you got friends like that. Amen? We said one other thing, and it's very important. Don't live a lifestyle of exaggeration. And I see a lot of exaggeration out here because everyone's got an ice shanty. And when they catch the fish week after week, fishy grows. How many are guilty? Raise your neighbor's hand. I caught this sturgeon. <laughs> it was 18 feet long. 18 feet? I, I've, heard, I've heard the same people give the same stories with different dimensions. The reason we shouldn't exaggerate, if you want to write this down, is our spirit that's born from above and is perfect in nature, we're joined with God, knows only to accomplish what you say. See, we are formed and made in the likeness and the favor and the image of God, so before Adam fell, anything that we were to decree was supposed to happen. And the analogy is if you take a wooden mailbox post and you put it in soil after a while it rots and the question is why because the soil remember the four soils of our heart the parable jesus it's really the four soils of our heart not the, the parable of the sower it's really the four soils of our heart that's what god was god told kevin when he had a visitation he said it's really the four soils of your heart because i look at the heart man looks at the exterior but everything that i do is with the heart out of the heart come the issues of life. So he said it's cold in many Bibles, the, the four, you know, the, the sower. It's not about the seed, it's about the soil of our heart and the four conditions of people's heart and why they fall away, why they have faith and why they don't. Hello? So the mailbox post that goes into the soil, the soil only knows one thing, to grow things. That's all it knows. Your heart is soil. It only knows when you speak to try to accomplish it. Isn't that good? So you should only speak what Logos says. And it says in the Greek, I have been saved, I have been healed, and I have been delivered. Don't disagree with the Bill of Rights. Don't disagree with your constitution. Line your words up with God's word and you get God's benefits. That's good. Praise the Lord. Woo! Ah, glory to God. 
Let's go to 1 Peter 5, 8. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about, say about, like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. First of all, we have to be vigilant and sober because the word here, devil, we've said many times, is the Greek word accuser. We should never accuse or make a railing accusation, the book of Jude says, against the seed of the elect. Raise your hand if you're the seed of the elect. You are. You're elect. Say, I'm elect. Say, I'm a saint. Say, I'm a friend of God. I'm no longer called servants, but friends. I'm made in his image and his likeness. Do you not know that you're God's? I lost some of you on that one. Three times in the Bible with a small g, even Jesus had to say to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and rebuke them, do you not know that you're God's? Because in the Hebrew language, and, and it's a picture language too, when, when Jesus, I say Jesus, but it's, you know, God, when, when, when God is creating Adam and he breathes into him the life, what did he breathe into him? Part of his spirit. That's why we're all eternal. We're all eternal. We all go eternally up or eternally down. And the only way if some of you are wondering about some of these things, the only way that God could create mankind 100% robot free, free will, was to give them the power to choose or to reject God. Because God's not a control freak. And that's why you have many people that are lost. There was no other way that God could create Adam and Eve with 100% God-like free will in his full image and his full likeness, but not, you know, he had the full ability to walk away. That's the only way God could do it. Because the question is, well, if God is just and he knows all things and he knows all these people will be in hell, why would he have done it? Because that was the only way that he could do it without winding us up. See, the angels were not given the power of choice, but they, some of them took it anyway, and as a result, they couldn't be redeemed because there was no future plan of redemption because there was no blood. There was no blood. Leviticus says without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. And does it ever say in Genesis 1:26, let us make an angel in our image and our likeness? See, the Bible says that angels are servants to the heirs of salvation. And Paul says in Corinthians, do you not know one day you'll judge the angels? Hello, folks. Come on, get your theology right. Get your theology right. <laughs> when we have a glorified body, yeah, right now they travel at the speed of light and they can do things that we can't do. But when we get our glorified body, <laughs> we're in the image of God. We have a blood covenant that they don't have. See, the Bible says that angels steadily look into the covenant that man has and they can't comprehend it because it's so good. Woo! Glory to God. If I was James Brown, I'd say, I feel good. Glory to God. So the devil goes around like a roaring lion. He's not running, he says he walks barely walks. I mean, he's a messed up dude. He's defeated. He's not a lion. This. That's my amigo. You mess with me, you're going to hear a roar behind my back. What was that? Mess with me in my house, you're going to hear a pastor come to the scene. It's called a shepherd, a German shepherd. She's got a bark and a bite. But listen to me. The Bible never depicts. See, it says Jesus is the lion of Judah. was always praised that one first. But it says the devil is like a roaring lion. And it doesn't say he leaps. It says he walks, barely walks. 
You unzip that fool, and it's like he looks like Pugsley from the Adams family. He's not even a lion. He's not even a lion. He's defeated. The Bible says Jesus went to hell and took his keychain. Hello? It says he removed his teeth. He, he, he pierced his side. He made a show of him openly. He's defeated. He's defeated. He's defeated. One old Pentecostal lady, Brother Hagin, shared when we were at Ramah said, Ah, oh, Brother Hagin, I got the devil on the run. And he said, Well, hallelujah, sister. And she said, Well, it's not good because he's running after me and I'm running too. But listen to me. Listen to me. We've got this back. We are the ones that rule and reign in our priesthood. Hello? We have belly buttons. We came through the birth and canal legally. We have residence. The enemy was banished here. The enemy is, 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 is grotesque. Can, can, I, can I, I, I have, ooh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I love, how many like smorgasbord? Especially when you go to like pizza kitchen. <laughs> the enemy attacks women with low self-esteem and rejection more than any other thing. Because if you don't like yourself and you don't feel good about yourself, you can't go out and manifest the kingdom. It's like the girl that said, I hate myself because I'm ugly. No, 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 that's not true. If she hated herself, she'd want to be ugly. She's suffering from low self-esteem, right? Think about this. Hallel was rejected, banished, got a free amusement ride, you know, on a light of boatman down here at the earth. It says that. He was cast, Ezekiel says he was cast out of heaven like a lightning bolt. Okay. He's locked out. He's going to the Hotel California for eternity, just like the Eagles used to sing. He can try to check out any time he want, but he can never leave. Mm -mm. Welcome to the Hotel California, Mr. Devil. He's political. He believes in global warming at this point because he's going to receive it. But I want you to know something that you don't realize. The king, the, the king of low self-esteem and rejection that he carries, because he's been locked out, he's a loser, he's a zero, and he has no victory. Because he's locked out for eternity. He's covetless. There's no covenant. He has the lowest self-esteem and worth of anything. It says in the Hebrew language, when Yeshua came up, because he thought he had him, it says that he made not only a show of them openly and he spoiled principalities and powers, but in the Greek language, there's a realm of talking about that, that he like melted them. He, he pushed them back. It says that they fell backwards. Read Psalms 22. It's, it's all in there. But what he did is he took Hillel, which was the most beautiful made in the image of God being just beautiful. And he melted his countenance. He melted his face. See, see, demons, if you realize this or not, and some are Nephilim and it gets complicated, but they're all, are you ready for this? Yugly. I'm talking yugly. Ugly, 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 ugly. Remember Red Fox, Esther, you ugly. Uh, there, ugly, Woo. ugly. Because they have no covenant. They've been sentenced to the lake of fire. They have nothing that we have. They're locked out. So what do they do? They go around and accuse people. When you get up in the morning, oh, I don't think you're attractive. You should turn around and say, what are you talking about? You're so ugly, you could stop a clock, devil. Get out of here. <laughs> they try to portray low self-esteem. And if you got it going on down here, when you get up to heaven, oh, baby, wait till you see. You're, it's the perfect version of you. You'll be recognized in heaven, but like the perfect, you know, God just like is so kind. It's like a little too wide, a little too short. So, some wrinkle removal. Not enough hair. 
zzz, miracle grow. I mean, God can do everything. When you get to heaven, you all look right around the age of 28 to 30, people say, or 33, somewhere right around there, and you are perfect. You go back to the garden estate. I mean, you're, baby, you're in better homes and gardens when you die and get on the other side. I mean, you're, you're good. You're all that in a bag of communion chips. I'm telling you. So if you got low self-esteem and you don't like what you see, or, you know, I'm not smart enough, I'm not tall enough, I'm not athletic enough, it, oh, get, get, just tell the devil how bad he's got it. Uh, when the devil comes over, he tries to like remind me of my past. I'm like, dude, I don't have a past. I don't have a past. But you have a very long future. It's very, very hot. Yeah. Yeah. I'll sing the old lines of Hell's Bells from ACDC. You're going to burn. I, mean, I, I give back to him what he tries to give to me. And because he's a little defeated punk, he runs. My dad always said, you know how to stop a bully? Pop him right here in the chin. Never mess with you again. Oh, I heard a bunch of Christians. I call them sissy parents. Oh, God's not the author of, of doing that. That's false theology. How come when Brother Kevin was here, he shared that this bully that went around beating everyone up came after him? And he was in hours of prayer, would fast, you know, 29, 30 days at a time. And the Lord said, Kevin, now just step back, step back. And he said, when I tell you to punch him, I want you to punch that second. And the Lord gave him that Mike Tyson time, and he hit this big Goliath, knocked him right out. You don't think like God thinks. Come on, man, get some fight in you. Jesus is a warrior! He's the most misrepresented man on the earth, I believe. We have him like floating around, broke, no home, taking bed sheets off the line, there's nothing to wear. That's not true. That's just not the right representation of our father. He had a treasurer. And there was enough money in there that there was embezzlement going on the whole time. And when he said, don't take a cloak or, you know, don't take your tunic or don't take food or money with you, he was trying to get them to live by faith. When he said, when you go into the city, don't take these things. He wasn't trying to make them broke. Because poverty and sickness in the Old Testament is a curse. Hello? Three curses of the law, if you want to write this down. It's indisputable. Spiritual death, sickness, and poverty. And if you're looking to get poor <laughs> so you can get close to God, <laughs> I don't understand some of these people. I, if, you, if you think sickness makes you, like, closer to God, then, like, when the doctor gives you medicine, you should just like bat it out of his hand. Oh, I need to be sick. That's, we're not going to go there. Job twenty two twenty eight. Job said, I will decree a thing and it shall be established. Please write this down. Why settle down here? Why settle when you can sue? What are you talking about? A Christian shouldn't take his brother to court. I'm not talking about that. And, he, and Paul was right, you shouldn't. Paul said, I'd rather be wronged. I could have so, sued quite a few Christians over my life, and I've just blessed them. I've written big checks, and I've gotten big dividends back. Because I go to the courts of heaven. So when I say, I want to talk about suing, I'm talking about suing the devil. You can counterclaim the devil. It's called fasting. It's called praying. It's called going behind the veil and dealing with offense, getting your heart free and blessing your enemy and then prosperity comes. Paul said, I'd rather be wronged, but a believer should never take another believer into court. He said that. Why would we need a natural court system when we've got the courts of heaven? Would you rather sit in a folding chair or be seated in the heavenly places far above principalities and powers? Would you rather be healed or would you rather walk around sick? Just saying. 
Just saying. Okay, praise the Lord. Please write this down. Demons attach themselves to emotion and memory. And that's why a lot of people need deliverance and they're stuck. They can't get past or out of a certain point. But angels are always activated and come for the timeless realm of speaking God's word. See, how many would like a hack? If you're playing music and it's secular, you could be at risk. Because whatever is in the heart of that composer's, whatever is in the heart of that composer gets in, bred into the music. So music, if you realize it or not, it just doesn't make your soul feel good. It gets into the spirit realm. That's why worship opens portals. Do we realize that? When we're worshiping, we're literally opening the heavens and the angels can come up and come down. And that's why you feel so good. And then you go back to your house and there's no open elevator there and you're depressed on Monday. Do you want to know how to open up your house? Put 24-7 worship on. Start praying in tongues a few hours a day. Start taking everything out of your house that offends the Holy Ghost and live clean. I eat clean. I don't just live clean. I eat clean. I eat mainly whole foods. That's what God had said to Pastor Scott in New Jersey. He said, Pastor Scott, you know, you, do you want to lose weight? He tried all these diets. He said, yeah. He said, only eat whole foods. Only eat what I made. Nothing with like, you know, you look at the ingredients and there's like 600 things you can't pronounce. Eat what the master pastor created. Eat clean, live clean, feel clean. Because it's the natural and it's the spiritual that marry each other. Amen? So if you want a portal in your house, but you're watching hours of TV, and then you get on the phone and you just start gossiping. Oh, Sunday was so cold. I had an icicle this long on my nose. And that Keith Vader looked at me and he put his hand out, but then he forgot my name. I'm so offended. Um, and that pastor annoys me because all he does is hit that little that was easy why does he have to have an easy button in church because his yoke is easy and his burden is light I want easy Woo! you can have it hard but I like easy <laughs> remember this we're going to close with this. There's so much more. But remember that subspace mission, without it, I call it mission impossible. Do you remember that from the 60s? Dun, 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 was that Phelps, Mr. Phelps? Do you decide to, you know, those are some cool shows back then. I, the stuff they produced today, just sexual trash. Oh, five men living together. Oh, it's just crazy stuff. It's crazy stuff. But I'm just telling you, your, your mission is impossible if you don't have submission. The whole reason a submarine is protected because it comes under the waters. It comes under the waters of adversity. And we've said many times that adversity is God's university. That's how he'll, he'll teach us things. But listen, if you don't have submission in your life, you can't operate in the God type of faith. And I'll give you one closing example. Lisa and John Bevere were, you know, they're both Italians and they were fighting and there were all these issues. And finally she was in the bathtub one day. She's like, I'm just going to leave John. I can't, I can't handle this anymore. This is before their national ministry started, but they were in a realm of ministry, but they were younger. She goes, I can't take this guy. We have fight after fight after fight after fight after fight. Raise your hand if you're going through that. No, just joking. So, usually, yeah, 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 okay. One honest person. <laughs> so, thank you for your honesty. But the thing was, she's in the bathtub saying, I'm just going to leave him. I'm done with him. They had a big fight. And guess what God said to Lisa Bevere? The exact opposite of how she saw it. He talked to her about pride and not being teachable. And he said 
Lisa, it's a yoke to you, but it's a mantle to John. When are you going to let John run the household? When are you going to submit to him? The light bulb went off. It's a yoke to you, not a good yoke, but it's a mantle to John. When are you going to let John run the household? She went to him and said, I resign. You're in charge. I'll go with you if you're right or wrong, and I'm going to let you run this house. You know, they had a marriage in heaven from that day forward. That was the shift of everything. Folks, I'm telling you, stay in your lane. If people on the highway didn't cross over while they're texting or playing Candy Crush while they're going down the highway at 80, you know, we wouldn't have accidents. Stay in your grace lane. And if you stay in your lane and you're under authority, I jokingly talk about the submarine, but I say humility torpedoes pride and sends it to the bottom. See, demon spirits cannot get under humility and teachableness. If you are displaying teachableness and humility in your life, how do you know if you have teachableness or humility? It's the correction test. How you react when a boss, a police officer, or a husband start to correct you is what's inside of you. Now, I didn't say they have to correct you the right way. Because, you know, if there's a husband like, oh, honey, I don't, I'm not really happy, you know, I mean, but it's when we're corrected the wrong way. Do you see what I'm saying? Hello? I got quiet in this uh, Amish church. When you're treated wrong, how do you respond? Do you take correction as rejection? If you take correction as rejection, it's because there's pride there. So if you want a greater realm of faith, you have to have a greater realm of, I come under. And Lord, I'm going to cut this leader a break because they probably have another hundred people they're dealing with that are bad. <laughs> a father, I'm going to give my husband a break because he's at work and he probably has management over management over management giving him a hard time. Hello? Cut people a break because you haven't walked in their shoes. Hello? So let's say this together. I will, I will. cut my neighbor. my neighbor. A break. Ooh, thank you, Father. Wow. How many feel that today they could go into a deeper realm of teachableness and honor and getting aligned so your faith will work? See, what what we what see, this is what people don't understand. Our human body is designed to heal itself when we get a cold, when we get sick. The human body is designed with the immune system and everything in it to heal itself, but it can't when there's offenses and there's woundedness. Do you see what I'm saying? We are supposed to live in a culture of perfect peace with one another, but do we? But we can. We can. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to challenge you with this last revelation. How many would like a Scooby snack? <sighs> An evangelist that's worldwide famous, and Willie, if everyone get come up for your battle stations, was highly offended by someone in the ministry. And guess what the Lord said to him? He said, as a believer, say believer, believer. you never have a right to be offended. And he said, what? He said, son, as a believer, none of my children ever have a right to be offended. But doesn't it say many are offended for the word's sake? We just got one of those new 56 volt, you know, electric uh, mowers. But when you still hit a rock, how many know that sound? Uh, what happens when you hit a rock? The, rock, the blades spinning around, it hits the rock, and you hear that distinct noise. And that rock goes flying out. That's what happens in the church. We get offended, either rightfully 
or wrongfully, and we go, <laughs> like that rock flying out of the church. Many are offended for the word's sake, but we don't have a right to be offended. So what do we do with offense? We bless back so our faith will operate because we have the God faith living in us. When we realize that we don't have the right to be offended, we have to say then, what is the soil of my heart? And why am I feeling offended? Please write this down. We're going to end. Hurt people hurt other people. So the deeper your hurt, the deeper the dig verbally, the deeper the financial injustice against you, the more that is a toxic wineskin manifesting. So you have pity on these people. You know, I just have to share this. We're done. But I've had people in business not pay me. I've had all sorts of crazy things happen to me. You know what I decided to do? I just decided one day to show up on their property and do work for free. You want to see the look on their face after they just beat me out of thousands of dollars? Well, I'm a minister, and Jesus said to bless back. And that's what I'm doing. What else do you need done? Well, I'm, I'm Jewish. I don't believe that way. Oh, it doesn't matter. You still reap the blessings. I'm here for free. They're like thinking it's candid camera. No, there's no cameras. But the eye of God sees throughout the earth. They're so convicted they paid me. Because I returned good for evil. And when we return good for evil, it takes faith to do that. Somebody said, that's stupid. They beat you out thousands of dollars and then you go to their property to, to, to be taken advantage of more. Didn't Yeshua say, if they slap you upside the face, turn the other cheek? If they take you, you know, one mile, go the extra mile? That was under Roman occupation. That was a law in that day in Rome. But listen, folks, the harder it is to do, the more we need to get faith involved. And when you get faith involved in your deliverance, your healing, uh, restitution, reconciliation, I mean, you can put faith into all these different things and they work. Because without faith, Hebrews 11, 6 says, it is impossible to please God. He that comes to God must believe that he is and he's a rewarder. I know God is not a restrictor, but a fulfiller. He's a rewarder. You can't lose with the faith you use. If you will operate in the love of God, he will always get it back to you because he made the chessboard, he made the pieces, and he knows how to checkmate the devil. So you can't lose the game. Michael almost always loses when I, no, I'm just teasing. <laughs> We're about 50-50 right now. But I'm just saying, when you sit down to play the devil in a game of chess, all I'm thinking of is checkmate. Checkmate. <sighs> yeah. Hey, man. We love you guys. Can we just stand? Did this message help anyone this morning? Faith is practical. It's not a concept. It's a way of life. For it says the just shall live by... Ooh, let's just close your eyes. Father... We just thank you that you're the man, literally, that is the message. You are life. You are warrior and poet. You are horse and rider. You are alpha and omega. You're beginning and end. And we are the eternal church. Even now, heaven and earth can pass away, but your words and your covenant remain intact. And you are a good God. You are a good God. And you said that you're not willing that any should die and be lost, but all should experience the new life. Because Yeshua is life 
and life in great abundance. So, Father, we just pray right now on the internet and here if there's anyone that wants to reaffirm their faith in Jesus, if there's anyone that's never voiced the need of repentance, that right now, you will do it let's say this together right now if you don't know where you're going when you die just hook up right now let's say this father jesus you are the only way the only truth and the only life i receive you right now i believe in you you took my place on the cross that i could have eternal life Whoever believes on the Son shall have everlasting life. I am now a son of the Most High. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to leave these altars open to agree to pray. If we could have Jane and some of our elders come forward. God's question, like I say all the time, is simply what do you have need of there's nothing too difficult for God all things are possible to those who believe let us just go into some worship I'd like us to just sing one song and to soak and then after one song if you could just start coming up we'll start anointing you with oil and pray in the prayer of victory and faith over you guys we love you guys let's just go Willie into um, some